and we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. Glad you could join us. Uh, don't forget about RainDaily.com. What am I talking about? Check it out, www.RainDaily.com. And uh, also, if you're looking for something to do on February 27th and you're in uh, western New York area, check out JKJ Boxing and their next event, which is taking place at the uh, Syracuse uh, Holiday Inn. Visit www.jkjboxing.com to check out the card and uh, uh, get yourself some tickets online and all that happy stuff. Now, you don't have to get tickets online. You can get them at the door. But uh, either way, make sure you tell them Billy C sent you and demand the Billy C discount. Well, uh, every week, uh, well, it's time for... Blast from the past. We shine the spotlight again on fighters from years Rocky past. Marciano, top ranking. Joe Lewis is the leading contender. Joe Frazier with a left hook. Good right hand thrown by Foreman that time. Look at that left that hook. Belt that goes to Ray Van It's blast from the past on Talking Boxing. And this week's Blast from the Past, which is being sponsored by KOFantasyBoxing.com. Check it out, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. Uh, features a, a very interesting character, a former world bantamweight champion, Pete Sandstall. And joining me right now to tell us all about Pete Sandstall uh, is my man, Alex Perpali. What's up, brother? Good evening, Billy C. How are you? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, uh, eh, I'll save it for later. We got some stuff we can talk about later. But uh, right now, we got an interesting guy for the uh, for the for the blast this week, uh, Pete Sandstall. And I actually stumbled across this guy while we were doing uh, our last uh, blast from the past, and uh, some interesting uh, uh, things pointed me in this guy's direction. And uh, I thought he was a, a pretty good choice. Tell us about him. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. Uh, we had uh, done him once before, uh, I think it was back in 2014. Did we? Uh, yeah. I, I don't remember doing I don't remember him at all. Neither huh? did I. <laughs> really? Oh, okay, okay. So when I looked it up, I said, oh, wow, we have done him. Oh, wow. Because he's not in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he's, in, he's not in the International Boxing Hall of Fame, which is kind of surprising when, when as we get to his uh, uh, accomplishments in, in the ring. Right, and I think, I, I thought, uh, see, Billy, see, wow, uh, yeah, I thought you, uh, this was by design, because we've had a couple of guys that um, were similar uh, to Pete in the sense that they had um, recently that we've done, uh, Yaki Lopez was kind of like this, where they had defeats, they faced other Hall of Famers, but they lost. Um, and, you know, I think that this is something you've talked about before, um, Forgive me if I start coughing. I feel a cough in my throat. Um, but um, there, it does. You do wonder about this new age of fans today. If guys like this will be lost, because um, I, I don't think there's the same sort of uh, fighter today, in um, to some degree that, or at least they don't get as much uh, credit uh, because guys tend to um, pad the records with uh, lesser opposition. Um, you know, he's more of a guy who is a, a, a top rival that, uh, you, you know, you fight a couple of times and um, he doesn't quite make it. You know, uh, Yaki Lopez was like that. He, he was right there in the top, ranked in the top ten of his weight class, uh, but he never became the champion. He had a couple of shots but never quite did it. Um, there's the other. There's another guy we just did recently that I'm completely blanking on. Um, but you know, I mean, those guys. I guess uh, sometimes they get in to the Hall of Fame if they happen to be on the ballot a year that um, there's none of the recent guys. You know, the cause it's always the guys who are freshly uh, retired that um, get the. Uh, first uh, votes well well this guy was sort of like the anti yaki lopez when we we're talking about yaki lopez and his punching power and and you know uh, uh you know what a warrior he was this guy was a warrior as well but he he did it kind of in the more of you know need i say because uh, you know so many people have different uh interpretations of the sweet science but this guy uh had uh, a lot of hand speed he was very hard to hit um, which uh, you know is indicative of uh, uh, of him uh, uh, 
you know, lack, you know, very uh, lack of knockouts, actually. And uh, uh, he also uh, uh, was aggressive, you know. So here's a guy that was uh, a good defensive fighter, but he was aggressive with hand speed. And, it, it, you know, so, uh, some like, uh, like some of the other fighters that we talked about uh, with the blast from the past, he, he never re- seemed to run out of energy, uh, uh, you know, and he fought in a time when, you know, uh, they weren't just limited to 12-round fights either. Right. I think that's what definitely made him so popular and why, uh, you know, I bet you a lot of, uh, if, if you're somebody who, uh, you know, the kind of fan who likes the, uh, is the old timers, uh, likes the golden age type fighters, um, this is a guy that, uh, oh, yeah, of course, when you hear his name, oh, my God, Pete Sansol, yeah, because, um, you know, he would, he was, all the bantamweights would have him on his, re- on their records, you know, so, um, uh, of the age, uh, so yeah, I think that that um, um, that definitely is counts versus something that people don't think of as often today. Um, and and you, and you did hit it on the head. It, this was he did fight in that golden age uh, of uh, bantamweights when bantamweights were uh, very popular. And uh, there were so many of them, and they, they were all really good. And he fought right in that, uh, right in that era and fought uh, a, a lot of uh, the guys, you know, that were uh, known uh, for being uh, uh, tough, like uh, similar fighters to Panama uh, Al Brown that we talked about last week, Speedy Dotto, uh, Eugene Hoyt, I think that's how you say his name, uh, Benny Schwartz, uh, uh, you know, guys like that that, that he fought. Uh, and and like you mentioned, young Perez, like you mentioned, he fought them multiple times as well. Right, exactly, and that that's what really is different uh, of um, you know from today compared to then, um, back then. Uh, but yeah, so just to, uh, to give the formal uh, outline of him, uh, Pete Sandstall, uh, his birth name Peter o- Olai. I don't know, I'm, I I don't know the vowels of uh, Norwegian, so. Um, you know, I'm not sure if that's Olay or Olai. Uh, Sanstal. Uh, some of his nicknames were the Blonde Tiger, Baby Cyclone. He was uh, born uh, March 28, 1905, and um, fought, he was Orthodox uh, and five foot three and a half inches. Um, born in Moy, Norway, which was a fishing village, um, and. Uh, that was one of the things I, um, there is one clip I did find, uh, and it's interesting, it's of him uh, sparring for maybe a minute, maybe not even. Um, uh, he, he spars with another fighter who I don't, didn't see identified um, on YouTube, and uh, it, it is interesting, I'll definitely post it because it's interesting about how, you know, how we talked about Panama Al Brown last week. This is the two of them sparring. Uh, it's sort of an exhibition. There's definitely a pretty sizable crowd there. Um, but you could see the, what we pointed out last week, the dramatic uh, um, physical appearance of Panama Al Brown. He really is um, a black licorice stick. Um, but uh, Pete Sandstall, like you said, yeah, very uh, – he um, uh, comes forward, throws a lot of punches, bobbing, weaving, um, fast. Not a hard puncher, not a hard puncher at all, um, but a uh, consistent puncher and a um, active fighter. Uh, they ca- a lot of description uh, of his uh, style is uh, fast, whirlwind. Um, he could protect himself almost with his offense. There was fights where he'd get cut, and then rather than hang back and just keep slipping, I mean, he could do that at occasion, but... Um, he would like keep throwing punches, so you're not going to be able to throw at him. Uh, he and he would just bleed and throw punches. So you're right; he would have um, uh, incredible amounts of energy, and um, uh, definitely, uh, you know, was fought, fighting fighting out of Norway, and or uh, and and some of his fights were there. The, the rematch with Panama Al Brown late in his career was in Norway, and of course, Norway has that. Uh, strange relationship with boxing even though this guy who was uh, you know an all-time great uh came out of there uh boxing has been banned um in norway i believe since 82 uh in the wake of duku kim um and i i know i talk talk about uh 
political correctness and sort of um, liberalism gone mad, uh, where it erodes rights. Uh, it has been ba barred from that country. Uh, people like the great Cecilia Brockus, uh, Bry uh, a female fighter, is from there, but doesn't even get to fight there. Uh, so, um, but there they did have this history. Uh, it's interesting because he even seemed to get his start. Uh, and so, uh, some of um, Pete Sandstall's um, amateur fights were through, like, scholastic programs. So even the school had, um, you know, was had an involvement with boxing. They must have saw, seen it as a, another athletic event that, you know, that, that the youth did. But um, 82, I don't know how that went, how it went down, but um, that's when they banned boxing. Well, they're, they're just... To get off topic, they are trying to bring it back. There, there is some legislation in place where uh, they're real close to having uh, uh, it return, which uh, would be good. But uh, uh, anyway, a lot of uh, uh, great, uh, you know, historians uh, throughout the, the sport of boxing have labeled uh, Pete Sandstall as as one of the the, the great uh, bantamweights. Uh, I mean, he's compared with guys like Terrible Terry McGovern and. And uh, Petey Kid Herman and Kid Williams. I mean, you know, these, these are all guys that we've done uh, on Blast from the Past. And, and as a matter of fact, they're all Hall of Famers. You know, I mean, he won uh, several, uh, uh, you know, awards from the Ring Magazine throughout his career. He was in some uh, very uh, high-profile fights in which some he won and, and some he didn't. Uh, he did win. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting to see even how they look at his career, which kind of seems a little flaky to me because um, for all intent and purposes, he won the world title on May 20th, 1931 in uh, Montreal, Canada, uh, when he won a 10-round decision over Archie Bell, although box rec doesn't show it like that. But, uh, you know, in other, uh, uh, you know, ring, like, say, the Ring uh, magazine, they show uh, him winning that title and having successful defenses uh, that later that year and retaining that title all the way up until a unification of sorts. He had won the, uh, I guess, the NBA's version of the Bantamweight title when he beat uh, uh, Archie Bell in 1931. And then when he fought Panama Al Brown in uh, August of that year and lost a very disputed decision, which we talked about last week, um, he, uh, Al Brown walked out of there with the NBA and his own title, which was the New York's version of the, uh, world Bantamweight title. Uh, so, and he never, uh, regained the title again after that. He did get another shot, but he never regained the title again. Right. And yeah, that, um, that, uh, fight with, uh, Panama Al Brown. So you're right. So it was sort of like, a the consensus unification at the time. Uh, for that was for all the marbles at bantamweight, um, and yeah. uh, and and that that was that that did did start a little uh, um, relationship there with uh, him and Panama, Panama Al Brown because they ended up fighting two more times um, or or women one more time I'm sorry because their fight actually was canceled several times they had postponements. Yeah, I'm sorry. One of the fights had been canceled, and then it was postponed. That that set when they finally did have the rematch, it was in Oslo, Norway, and it was sort of weird because there's a lot of discrepancies of when that fight actually took place. Um, Box Rex says 35, and evidently um, Fight Facts says 34. Um, but. Uh, it's interesting because the the first fight broke records in terms of attendance, and it was the biggest hit fight in uh, history in Montreal, and uh, the rematch was a pretty small uh, attendance uh, in Oslo because you know uh, it, boxing I guess wasn't quite as big there in well, thirty five. That was one of the, his later fights and. Uh, he did defeat Brown in that fight. Some people refer, you know, we're talking about his style, uh, you know, aggressive, uh, throws a lot of punches, uh, never runs out of gas. There were people, um, including including Nate Fleischer, who who compared him to to uh, Jack Dempsey, which is amazing considering that Jack Dempsey was a knockout puncher and Pete Sandstall, um, you know, of his uh, uh, 
uh, 96 uh, wins that weren't newspaper decision wins. He only had 27 knockouts, 24 percent uh, ratio, uh, which is uh, you know how do you how do you compare a guy uh, with Jack Dempsey who was a you know vicious killer you know and 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 uh, the eyebrow in 2006 in their journal uh, actually rated him out of all the best uh, out of all the bantamweights ever uh, as of 2006 he was ranked number 21. Which is pretty high, considering all the bantamweights that uh, uh, had laced on some gloves. Yeah, yeah, twenty-one. That that is. I mean, it's definitely respectable. But I think that's where you do see that. Um, okay, then that's that could be reason why he's not quite in the International Boxing Hall of Fame quite yet, and and why unfortunately this is the kind of guy that could get end up getting forgotten if the sort of trends we're seeing. Uh, in the Hall of Fame voting continues, um, you know, where I think a guy, I mean, I know you like him, but um, guys like Riddick Bowe and Ray Mancini um, can get in. You're going to, there's going to, more likely the voters are going to forget about the Pete, Pete Sandstall. Well, well, wait, this goes back to why <laughs> a guy, no, 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 listen, this is why I feel that the Hall of Fame shouldn't just be about like, like you make a great point about, especially Pete Sandstone. You know, uh, he fought the guys, the, the the big name guys, and came up short, right? So you say to yourself, you know, we talk about this with Marlon Starling and and Donald Curry. Uh, you know, why they might not get into the Hall of Fame, but you know, you, when you look at a guy uh, like uh, um, you know, like like Boom Boom Mancini or um, you know other fighters that are are in there that people. Uh, you know, have a, a tendency to not think. It's the impact that uh, that that they made, and and I believe that Pete Sandstall, because this is the the perfect example of back in that era why boxing was a trade. Because Pete Sandstall, not only was he uh, a very successful amateur, he turned pro. Then the guy was a manager. He was a gym owner. He was a promoter. He did all of that. I mean, his he this guy was a boxing. He was in the boxing business, and that's something that we don't have uh, today. I think. Right, right. I think that that's um, yeah. He ended up right. He stayed in there his whole life in boxing. His whole life, he became a referee as well as a promoter. Right, he was a ref too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I mean, I think we do see instances of that, but perhaps not quite at an, um, on this kind of a level where uh, he did all of it. Um, and the guy still, he listen, he fought Sixto Escobar in, in 1935 when he was way past his prime, and he still went the distance with the guy. You know, I, I mean, you know, Escobar is a Hall of Famer, isn't he? Sixto yeah. Escobar is a Hall of Famer, you know. So. And and when he I fought him, he was twenty five. Uh, Sixto was uh, twenty. Sixto was uh, twenty five and nine at the time, and I know he's got way more wins now. So obviously, it was early in his career. Well, not now, but I mean, he finished his career with a lot more wins. You know, so I mean, he fought him uh, early in in his career, and Pete Sandstro was at the end of his. You know, and, and he went the distance. You know, so um, I I mean, he he never was stopped, right? No, I don't. I don't think he was ever stopped, right? Right. You know. uh, and yeah, I, I think there. I think we're talking about four Hall of Famers here, with and a win with one win over them. We have Panama Al Brown twice. We have Sixto Escobar. We have um, Midget Walgast. Yep. And I think he, you know, he lost to all of them uh, except, he, like I said, he did avenge himself against Panama Al Brown. Speedy Dotto. He had a draw Speedy with him. Speedy Dotto. Uh, yeah, he's another um, Hall of Famer, correct? And Emil Spider Fladner is. I believe he is a Hall of Famer, too. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, and he had to draw with Dotto, you know, so, uh, uh, I, I don't know. You know, it just uh, it just seems uh, seems a little crazy, but uh, this guy this guy is somebody that uh, shouldn't be forgotten, in my opinion, because of the impact he made, um, not just in the ring, you know, before his pro career, and then he, he stayed with it, you know, I mean, he just... Well, and I think that that's what, what I was, um, what, and I think maybe you're, you're saying the same thing, is that... Uh, in terms of impact of the sport, Ray Mancini and Rick Bowe, they were two real popular guys that got a lot of people to watch boxing in their eras. And um, I think he did too. It's just that because it wasn't TV, this was a, a time when there was no TV. But that's not his uh, fault. Right, you know, exactly. and, and, and I think And, and I think he was popular, and I think that's why where it's unfortunate that today's voter 
they might not uh, do the reading to see, oh, wait a minute, look at this. Uh, here they are, the paper's talking again about, uh, you know, Pete St Sandstall. And, um, you know, because, but they will see who was on CBS every weekend. Oh, yeah, it was uh, Ray Mancini. Yeah, but look at, look at Arturo Gotti. Arturo Gotti was a, was a situation where a lot of people felt that he shouldn't have gotten in. You know, although he was a world champion, a lot of people felt that he shouldn't have gotten in. When, and when people asked me, I said, well, I feel that Arturo Gotti deserved to get in because of the impact he made on the sport. You know, uh, yeah, he came up short in some of the big fights. But he was such a warrior and and so memorable, you know. We, here we are remembering him because people can punch him up on YouTube and they can't with Pete Sandstall, you know. So um, it's a shame, and and hopefully, uh, you know, they'll get some interest in these guys. I mean, uh, um, you know, he. I think he, this was another one of these guys uh, that uh, that went away to the army in World War Two, you know. So you, you're looking at a guy in uh, with 113 pro fights, almost 20 years of boxing. And, by the way, he served in the Army in World War II. You just don't see that anymore. Right. And he, yeah, he actually served, uh, I believe it was, he served for us. Um, yeah. He, uh, which uh, was interesting because he had been Nor Norwegian. Uh, we'll talk about a, uh, you know, patriotic guy. Uh, he, uh, you know, he lives here. And he lived in Brooklyn. And um, uh, he believed, he considered himself an American. And, yeah. um uh, but he did. Um, oh, I was just going to say something. I just lost my train. I think he. Di I think he died in Brooklyn too. He, he had a series of uh, uh, strokes and uh, and passed away. Uh, uh, I believe in his seventies. How old was he when he when he passed away? I think it's seventy six. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, he did have uh, a little dementia, as we see uh, in so many fighters in the last uh, five or six years of his life. Uh, he actually donated his body to science which I thought was an interesting little uh, footnote there. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, there is that... Uh, I was trying to think of, you know, whose style he's like today, and I think that's the thing that's difficult, is maybe a young Paul Spatafora, because a real speedy but defensive also, uh, and, and slickly defensive, um, exciting guy. It um, could be a Rigandow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rigandau is uh, speedy and slick, and you know, may, may, well, this guy was uh, uh, action-packed. You know, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about Rigo is as much as see, and I think that's what I was going to say. I was going to, you know, argue about uh, Arturo Gotti. Um, is I guess my um, Hall of Fame idea of the Hall of Fame is a little snootier, uh, a little snobbier. Uh, I would not have Gotti in there. I know. I, we, you and I had this discussion on air one yeah. time about it. You didn't, and but you didn't think that Riddick Bowe or Boom Boom Mancini should have gotten in either. You know? Yeah, even Riddick Bowe, as much as I like him, uh, I don't think he. Uh, I, I don't know. The Holyfield win is is his only real cred. Uh, but that, yeah, you should big. you shouldn't that's get big. into the Hall of Fame with what you could have done. You know what I mean, and what right, you should have right. done. Right. Right. Uh, title bout championship computer game. Who'd you put Pistol Pete in with? Um, I put him in against um, uh, number one on uh, BillyCBoxing.com at bantamweight. Uh, just like uh, same guy, the same character that we put uh, Panama Al Brown in the other last week or two weeks ago, whenever that was. Uh, Shinsuke Yamanaka, and the first time they fought, Yamanaka defeats him uh, in a lopsided uh, unanimous decision. Uh, it's interesting. I actually noted uh, noticed that um, I think the game might actually it must pull info from Box Rack because there was um, the reason why I caught it was there had been one of Sandstall's uh, in one of his fights he had been called for thrashing. Uh, that word sort of caught my eye, and um, you know it's like a foul and. That came up in one of the rounds in the title about championship boxing game. He didn't lose a point, but he got a warning for thrashing. <laughs> and uh, so it must definitely pull uh, some info from real life, uh, um, you know, uh, occasions, uh, because that is in, you could find that comment in the box rec, uh, 
you know, box rec tells you little details about the fights. Right, right. But, um, so Yamanaka wins 117-111, 116-113, and 115-113, a unanimous decision. When they fight 100 times, Yamanaka gets the best of him. Hmm. And um, Pete Sandstall ends up with a record of 43 victories, 47 defeats, and 10 draws. He only scores eight knockouts in his 43, no- in his 43 uh, wins. But Yamanaka, even we're talking light, feather-fisted gentleman here, uh, scored only four knockouts in his uh, 47 victories. Well, that makes sense because uh, Pete Sandstall never was knocked out. <laughs> so uh, There you go. <laughs> uh, Pete Sandstall, former uh, world bantamweight champion, not in the Hall of Fame, but uh, I, I believe he should be. Uh, according to uh, Boxrec, he's 110 years old. Even though we <laughs> we know we know that he passed away in 1982, uh, at uh, uh, 76, you said right. Um, he had uh, a career record: 96 wins, 26. Uh, I'm sorry, 27 coming by knockout. He lost six. Uh, he had eight draws. He also fought in the newspaper decision era, where he picked up another three wins. Uh, he had a total of 113 fights throughout his career with a 24 percent knockout ratio um pistol pete <laughs> although that wasn't his nickname like alex said baby cyclone and blonde tiger pete sandstall it just it, pistol pete just sounds so much better but anyway uh <laughs> pete sandstall our uh, blast from the past this week uh as usual alex great job we're going to take a short break you're going to stick around because uh you know what we got to uh uh, talk about after uh, after the break here. We got a couple of interesting things to speak the animals? about. <laughs> yeah, about the animals. I mean, you you, you know you were accusing uh, several fighters who uh, weren't gay that were gay. I so said everybody's uh, coming out. Laughing. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I you know it, it's uh, this is parallel to that. So uh, Alex and I will be back in about two. 